In this video, I'm going to show you how to make completely custom effects. These include blinking lights, slinky effects, and bouncing or pivoting around a spot in a word. So let's go. Alright, I have a blank project. Let's add other node. We want a rich text label. Go ahead and expand that out. Let's enable BB code. That's what allows these effects that we're going to make. Next at the bottom in the project folder, create new script. This is going to be the script that holds the code for your custom effect. I'm going to call mine color underscore pattern and save that. Open it up. To make this be recognized as a custom text effect, instead of extends node, we say extends a rich text effect. Then we also need to name this. I'm going to make a color pattern. So we have to say class underscore name color pattern. Next, you have to name a variable exactly as var bb code and give it the string value of the tag. So for bold, it would be b. For italics, it's i. For mine, I'm going to use color underscore pattern. Now the main function we have to override is func underscore process custom fx. I'm going to go ahead and return true. This function tells us how we should render this character. Inside this function, let's make the arguments that they're going to pass in. So I want them to specify what colors they want. So I'm going to say var colors is equal to char fx dot m. This is a dictionary of everything that they passed in. We can use the normal get function from the dictionary. I want the argument that they give to be colors. After this, I want the colors to be an array. So I'm going to use square brackets. I'll just make it so that by default, everything shows as red. Now let's set the color for this. We can say char fx dot color is equal to colors. To get the position in this string, we can say char fx dot range dot x. And since we want to wrap back to the beginning of this array, we can use the modulo operator. Remember, this gives us remainder. So we can say a mod the len of colors. Let's test this how it is right now. So let's save it. I'll use the default location. Back in 2D view, select your rich text label. Remember, use the BB code that you specified at the top. So mine was color pattern inside of square brackets. At first, it won't be recognized. We just have to add it down here in the custom effects section. So let's add a new array, add element, click empty. And since mine was called the color pattern, let's say new color pattern. It disappeared, that means it's recognized. So I'll put the words testing here and I'll close off my tag. Let's also increase the font size. So I'll filter the properties to go to font. I'll just set the normal one to be 80. I can run the game. I'll select the current scene. There we go, it works. Now that we have this in a working state, if we want it to reload automatically, we can go back to our script. On line one, add the at tool annotation. This will make it so that it reloads in the editor. This part can be kind of weird, but here, let's try this first. So I'm going to specify as my color argument. Remember, inside the code, I said it, I'm looking for the word colors. Go back in 2D view. After the word color pattern, I'm going to put space colors equals. I'll put red. If it doesn't update in real time, close this scene and reopen it. Oh, looks like we're getting some errors here. To make this be recognized as a list, you can provide a comma. I'll say comma blue. Now it works. Because there's a comma inside, it automatically gets recognized as an array. But if you just wanted one color, you'd be using a different tag. Let's make it green as the other one. You can see it outputs kind of a lot of errors here, but that's fine. Just as you're typing, it's trying to reload every second. Now let's make them blink like I showed earlier. Back in your script, let's make a new variable called color pause for color position. This is going to be equal to what we had down here. So I'm going to cut and paste. Since we want it to be based on the time, that's what causes it to blink. Let's put parentheses around this first part. And we can add in the sign to get the elapsed time for this text. It's char fx. If you're getting a ton of errors, you can take out the at tool part so that it stops trying to reload. And then close and reopen it. Now you'll stop getting a ton of errors because it's trying to reload as you type stuff. That's not what we want. Now where were we? We want char fx dot elapsed time. Remember, sign goes from negative 1 to 1. Let's add 1 to that to make it stay above 0. Then let's put parentheses around that. So I'm going to move this to the next line to make this easier to read. But we want this to be an integer, so we'll round it down by putting the word int here. This will convert a float to an integer. Now let's put our color pause inside of here. We can try it. putting back the tool annotation. Let's reload this by closing and reopening it. Yep, that seems to work. 
You might notice it's a bit slow if you wanted to speed it up. This is just a normal sine function. You're going to multiply the elapsed time by 2. We go to, say, 4, and it's even faster. You can change it how you see fit. This effect seems to work, so I'm going to close it. Let's make a new rich text label for the other effects I'm going to show. Let's reset this up quickly. Change the font size. Enable BB code. Maybe let's use some better variable naming. Let's name this one Slinky. Go ahead and save it. Let's make another new script at the bottom. This one will be Slinky. Open that up. If you want, you can copy paste in what you used before. I'm going to leave out the tool part for right now and put this all into Slinky. Rename the class name so Slinky now. And my BB code is now Slinky. I'm going to remove all this code that we had. Let's make an input for this that stores the speed that this should move at. Var speed is equal to charfx.env.git. We want speed. The default we can say is 1. To change the position something is rendered at, we can use charfx.offset. Since I'm going to move this in the horizontal direction, I'll say .x. Let's first add a constant amount. So I'll just say plus equals 50. Let's go back to 2D and set this up. So remember, you have to add in the custom effect, add element. We want slinky. In the text, I'll say slinky and say this is slinky. Then close out our slinky tag. Remember to put the forward slash before your closing tag. Let's run this by going to run current scene. You can see it's spaced out compared to how it was in the editor. Let's go to our output log and group together all the duplicates. And we can hide all the labels here. Nothing should be output. Let's go back to script. At the top, let's add the at tool. And remember, you just have to reload it by closing and reopening that scene. You can see it's spaced now. If I go back to the script, which I'm going to make this floating, now we can see our changes as I make them. So if I make this 100, you can see it does space it. Similar to before, we can use a sine function. Our offset plus equals char fx dot relative index. This is how far along in the string it is. Now we're going to do a bit of math here, so let's multiply this by sine of charfx.elapsed time. You can see it kind of goes out and goes back in. Also, if it's not very smooth, then maybe you just don't have the window focused. If we want things to stretch more as it gets farther along in the string, we can use a pow for that. It'll be exponential. So let's put all this in parentheses. And at the beginning, we can say pow. And at the very end, let's provide what we should raise this to the power of. I'll say power of 2. That looks pretty good to me. If you want to speed it up, let's use our speed variable that we set. Let's copy that. And inside of the sign function, let's say times speed. By default, our speed is 1, so it won't change. Inside our BB code, in the beginning tag, let's say speed equals 4. So now it does go way faster. Maybe that's too fast, so I'll say 2. Or 20 is <laughs> 20 is a bit too fast, but <laughs> yeah, that looks good to me. Let's move on to the last example of the pivot. I'm going to close out of this one, save it. I'll go ahead and set up the rich text label. You guys have seen this. And as before, you guys have seen how to make a custom effect, so I'll do this setup quickly. For now, I'm going to remove the at tool annotation. Okay, we're all set up now. Let's take everything that we've learned so far and put it together. So first, let's make a variable to say how far up and down they should move. Say var vertical size is equal to charfx.env.git. I'll call this one vertical size. And I'll use a default value of 6. Next is the pivot index. This is the index of the letter that should pivot around. Let's change the y position. So we'll say charfx.offset.y plus equals the vertical size. We'll multiply that times the sine of charfx.elapsed time. Let's write some text in here. Remember to add the custom effect. Now if we run the game, there we go. We can see it's slightly moving there. But we want it to pivot around a point. Let's add that now. Let's go back to our script. Let's use the pivot index variable that we made. So we'll multiply that times our vertical size. I'm going to wrap this in parentheses just to make it easier to understand. So multiplied by pivot index. Let's go ahead and add the at tool annotation at the top. 
Since we want to take into account our distance from the pivot index, let's use the absolute value function, which is abs. To get our distance from there, let's subtract the char fx dot relative index. I'll move this to the next line. There we go, now we're pivoting around zero. Let's make it so we don't go above here. To do that, I'm gonna use backslash. The reason we didn't have to use backslash up here is because this had parentheses wrapping it. Let's wrap this sign part in parentheses, and we need to say add one to that. Now if we go back, there we go, it just goes down farther now. If you don't want it to go down as far, you could divide this by two. If you want to speed it up, then just multiply elapsed time two here. What if we do 10? That's a little faster than if you do 20. It's really fast. <laughs> Let's go back to two. If you want to see how to do more text effects that are using the built-in ones, check out this video here. Other than that, thanks for watching.